Hi guys, um, it's Amy here. I just wanted to give a, it probably won't be quick, but I wanted to give my version of my labor and delivery story. Um, Adam put up a video um, of snippets that he'd recorded throughout the day, but uh, I wanted to give the full story so I don't forget it. So here it is. So you would have seen, um, maybe, uh, from Adam's video on our labor and delivery story that Amelia Rose Martin was born on the 29th of May 2016 at 624 and she was 3.3 kilograms and um, 51 centimeters long. So basically um, I went into labor on Saturday morning or what I thought was labor and it ended up being a false labor. It stalled um, and uh, recommenced again at in the afternoon but um, nothing to keep me awake so I went to sleep Saturday night and Sunday night at 2 sorry Sunday morning at 2 30 a.m. Um, the contractions woke me up and they were significantly stronger than um, the ones on Saturday and um, a bit further apart uh, but lots more intense and um, for longer as well so that was when the labor truly began so I popped my TENS machine on and I labored at home for quite a while till around um, 12 o'clock, one, one, 12, 1 o'clock and that was around the time when I was starting to really just want to find out how how I was going. The contractions had sped up a lot. They were um, every five minutes um, lasting about a minute and um, very intense and and yeah so I, I wanted to know how I was going and how far along I was and if we could go to the hospital so we called them up and went in and oh also I should say that any movement uh, on my behalf was just agony I'd read a lot about how moving can help with the labor and um, help get the baby into the best position and all that all that sort of thing but any movement was just agony for me so needless to say the car ride was not fun into the hospital um, every bump every tiny little thump uh, was was really painful and getting out of the car walking into the lift and up to the birth suite where we um, arrived was was really painful as well but we got there and um, then we arrived. So we arrived at the birth suite and were shown to our room. And I must say we were left um, by ourselves, Adam and I, for quite a lot of the rest of the labor, um, which was which surprised me. I wasn't expecting that. Um, but as I'll describe, it didn't really phase me that much. Um, but yeah, we got to our room and then it took about 45 minutes for someone to check how far dilated I was. I was really hoping uh, like one of the midwives would just do it and tell me, but they um, said that my obstetrician needed to do it. So she took 45 minutes. We had a check and um, I was, she told me four centimeters dilated, um, which was great. So we could um, settle in and we weren't going home. So we we're going to stay at the hospital at that point, which is great. So yeah, I had gotten really frustrated and a bit cranky at, at all the waiting and the contractions were really painful and it was cold in the room and I asked about the thermostat and they couldn't turn that up so um, that was kind of annoying but at that point in time once we found out we were settling in I was like right okay I need to get in the shower because I'm freezing and I sort of hadn't brought anything to wear during the labor in the hospital because I just assumed that I would wear a hospital gown and also that the room would be warm enough. Um, so I'm like, okay, let's get in the shower. Um, the shower was okay, but I wanted to keep my hair out of the water because I figured that if it got wet, it would keep me, it would make me even colder. Um, so I was like, moving my head from side to side so one shoulder got in the water and the other shoulder got in the water and then um but I was yeah still really cold so Adam ran the bath uh, which took about I don't know 20 minutes to half an hour to fill up but we eventually um got it filled and I got in 
So I was that desperate to just get warm and get comfortable and I thought, you know, the bath um, would be good for the labour as well. Um, that I pretty much just got in. The temperature didn't phase me. It was warm and I was cold, so that was all I wanted. But um, after a few minutes in the bath, it soon became apparent that it was probably a little too warm. But also, um, that's when I got into trouble. Because of my uh, inability to move without pain, um, the bath, it was so big that um, my legs started to float and, um, and yeah, so it was really hard for me to like brace myself during the contractions, which really, really helped me, um, in, when I was at home and, and that sort of thing. And so I couldn't brace myself. It was getting like the bath was quite warm. And then I was at that point as well, I went into, I went into a kind of primal mode. It wasn't exactly intentional, um, but I closed my eyes, I stopped talking and just sort of breathed and grunted through each contraction. And also I was kind of hyperventilating. I was, um, not intentionally of course, but yeah, I was, the contractions had intensified to the level where I was just like, <sighs> kind of thing. So it was just, I needed to slow down and yeah, so after a little bit, the midwife came in and checked the baby and thank goodness she did because um, she notified us that the baby's heart rate had elevated. She was probably in a little bit of distress through the temperature and that I need to get out of the bath. And that was awesome because I'd been thinking, I'm like, how am I going to get out of this bath? I have no idea. I couldn't voice any of this because I wasn't talking and I felt like if I spoke, I would sort of break the the zone that I was in during the contractions of concentration and that sort of thing. But I managed to lean forward, grab a bar um, and somehow lug myself out of the bath. Um, they put the... CTG strap on when I was out of the bath, monitor the baby, and then I was allowed to sit back down again. So a seated position was my ideal position for the labor and um, it got me through most of it. And that's pretty much where I stayed for the rest of my active labor. Um, I don't really remember a lot between um, that point and the point where I began to push. Um, I remember uh, getting the urge to push quite early on and um, and I remember I was checked for oh no that's right I was I went back on the bed um, the opposition checked my progress and I'd gotten to seven centimeters and it was at, at that point that she uh, broke my waters uh, they hadn't broken naturally and from then things um, really, really sped up, which was good for me. Um, so yeah, I was back in the chair. I felt the urge to push. I told Adam, managed to get that um, out of my mouth. And he was like, no, 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 no. We're, you know, we've still got more to go. Um, in his mind, he was thinking it was just way too soon. Um, but yeah, I was, I was there basically. The midwife came in, she checked and she's like, no, I think, I think you, you are ready. And, um, she asked me to go to the toilet to empty my bladder to see if there was anything that could come out as any pressure in the bladder could impede with pushing. And I managed to get a tiny little bit out and, um, and then I was ready. So they, they got me up on the bed. I was turned to my side so that, um, Amelia could, um, sort of wheel her way down into a better position. And then I was um, back on my back and ready to push. And at that point I had fully woken up from this zone, um, sort of primal zone that I'd gone into during the contractions. I was ready, I was alert, and I was just like so ready to do this sort of thing. And um, it was amazing as soon as I started pushing, like, the pain just disappeared during the contractions. I, I didn't feel any pain at all. Pushing was 
awesome. Um, so I was really, really lucky. Um, and yeah, just to let people know out there that yeah, pushing can be completely pain free. Um, I should also mention that I hadn't had any pain medication um, throughout the whole labor. I'd used the tens at home, but since I got into the bath, I had to take it off. And then from that point onwards, I had no pain medication, which I was kind of surprised about. I wanted to try the gas at least and was totally open to epidurals and things like that. But um, while having a preference to, to avoid it if I could, but yeah, managed to get through it um, medication free, which was awesome. Um, so yeah, I began to push, pushed for about an hour, an hour and a half. Um, at the hour point, um, the midwife was getting a bit concerned because I'd been giving some good pushes, but it didn't seem to be progressing at all. And she said that she thought that possibly, um, the cord was, a, was around, um, Amelia's neck. So obviously that's not what you want to hear and the obstetrician um, came in and she agreed and um, yeah because I'd been pushing with just the midwife and I, at that point I was just like she's going to live my baby this is going to be awesome it's going to be over really fast because she'd said that um, she's pretty much ready to come um, and but no so the obstetrician came she's like um, Amy I think we need to use the vacuum um, cup on her head in order to get her out because um, yeah there's we think this is what's happened she's a little crooked in the birth canal her head was a little askew which was meaning that she couldn't come out unassisted sort of thing so I was just like a little bit, little bit hesitant because I'd read a lot of things about interventions and um, was really really wanting to avoid it but I was like okay let's let's do it um so she began and that was when the pain began again because oh my god that thing really hurts um that's not something that I'd prepared for and but I suppose like when they're putting when you think about it they're putting a um disc that's about 10 centimeters uh in diameter uh, onto your baby's head that they've you know they've got to get it up in there and um and attach it to her head so yeah that happened and um she was pulled out uh it was a little bit sketchy for a while there um Adam said I wasn't really looking at that end of the table but Adam said that um Dr. Kai our doctor um had her foot up on the table and was wrenching at the end of the vacuum seal, like with all of her might to try and get Amelia out. And um, for a while I was super scared, or not a while, a few minutes probably, I was really scared that I'd have to have an emergency cesarean and after all that labor kind of thing that, um, yeah, she wouldn't come out naturally. But she did uh, eventually pop out, which was awesome. And um, yeah, as soon as her head popped out um the doctor just looped over the uh, umbilical cord and she came out fine and crying and they popped her on my chest and everything was well um so that was yeah really exciting they popped her on her chest um on my chest sorry uh face up so I couldn't actually see her so her back was on my chest <laughs> So that was kind of a bit sad. I was like, can someone please turn her over so I can see my baby? Um, but yeah, I eventually got to see her and she's amazing. And um, yeah, hopefully, this has taken so much longer than I anticipated, but hopefully that um, is a bit more of a comprehensive labor and delivery story. I did get a second degree tear. Um, it healed pretty easily. I did bleed for a, a little bit longer than um, is perhaps normal for a, a normal vaginal birth. But um, yeah, so that's the labour and delivery story.